Here is a normal bone down at the bottom. You'll notice already that there's a lot of marrow and uh, in this bone it happens to be a rib and there's a lot of fat or about 50% of the cross-sectional surface of the marrow is fat, which is normal. And if you wanna look for all the normal marrow cells, you can. Uh, or if you want to study in this case, the uh, general normal uh, architecture of trabecular bone, because here are the bony trabeculae or spicules you can. And let's do that because we want to compare it to the abnormal one on top. Notice two things about this bone, no matter where we go. You'll notice that as the osteoblasts lay down a bone, they lay it down in layers. So that's why you have fairly parallel lamellar lines within this bone. That's the first thing you should notice. The other thing that you should notice is that you'll see occasional osteoblasts laying down bone uh, in this uh, spicule, and you may see occasional osteoclasts as well. Um, I don't see any, and generally you may look for a hard time before you see one, but every bone of any age is basically a homeostasis between these uh, osteoblasts here laying down the bone, uh, putting calcium into the bone, and the osteoclasts, uh, which are multinucleated histiocytes, or giant cells, taking the calcium out of the bone and put it back into the blood. That's the normal homeostasis of bone at any stage in its life. And in some areas like osteoporosis, it's more clastic rather than blastic. In growing bone, it's more blastic than clastic. Here is the bone on top in question. This is a disease of bone called Paget's disease. Now we saw Paget's disease of the nipple, uh, which is a uh, symbolic of underlying malignancies usually, uh, but there's also another Paget's disease spelled the same way of bone. And the very, very best way to describe Paget's disease of bone is in three words, and it's called osteoblasts gone wild. Do you remember how in this piece of bone down here we saw an occasional nice thin osteoblast? Well, look at this. They're all over the place over here. They're going wild. They're laying down bone like there's no tomorrow. In addition, you can remember that the uh, lamell lamellar, the lines that the osteoblasts make as they make this bone are generally lamellar. In other words, they're fairly uh, like layers and they're rather parallel to each other. But look at the lines of bone in Paget's disease. They're non-lamellar. And the collagen that's between these fibers is very refractile. So if you would polarize this, you would see some nice parallel lines here with not that many osteoblasts. But in Paget's disease, in which the osteoblasts go crazy, um, you can see that the bone that it's laying down is non-lamellar. Some of them may look a little bit parallel, but most of it looks what they call marbled. It's not parallel at all. Uh, oh, and yes, like I said before, even though Paget's disease is a process in which is primarily hyperactivity of the osteoblasts, here you see an osteoclast as well. And generally speaking, uh, that doesn't mean that there's more reabsorption of bone going on than deposition. It just means that it's an osteoclast. And in every bone, you'll see osteoclasts and osteoblasts. And in Paget's disease, the osteoblasts go crazy. It's uh, regarded as a benign disease. It has a very striking radiologic and uh, appearance. It involves whole bones. And in, when you give a bone scanning agent that uh, measures uh, osteoblastic activity, uh, very occasionally the bone is as hot as could be and that it's taking up the uh, osteoblastic isotope uh, extremely uh, intensely. Um, in some rare cases in older people, uh, you can find sarcomas arising, arising in Paget's disease and they would call these pagetoid sarcomas. But generally speaking, most of them 
do not turn into malignancies. And I thank you very much.